Today is uh, to the thanks of Mariam. She suggested uh, the artist for today. Um, she really pushed it forward. She got so excited and dreaming about it. And I was like, I can't, I can't deny this. I can't, I can't take this away from Mariam. So uh, all thanks to Mariam. And also, uh, obviously, the guys that picked the guys up, Arif and uh, Marcel, good job. Look up, I look up to you. No worries, alright, I think we should get off uh, the stage and uh, walk back on. Come uh, on, come on, come on. Slow down, everyone. Why are you guys sitting so far away, just out of curiosity? <laughs> Is there any way you can come closer? It's just because we're a small group and I would love just to feel like the warmth and the closeness and the vibe with you guys. Particularly in this cold yeah. as well. Um, so I'm going to perform a few spoken word pieces for you guys today. Um, inshallah, maybe I'll talk a little bit about my journey to Islam. Um, and just, it's all about just sharing and, and expression. And I really like, as a, as a performer, as an artist, it's very much about feeling from the audience as well. It's not just about me standing here and like giving you words. It's about, you know, it's about, it's a transfer of love really. Like I want to, I love you guys and I want to share what I've, what to say, and I want you guys to share your love with me too, inshallah. Alright, so I'm going to start off with a poem, um, a piece which is called Feels Like I'm In Love. And um, this kind of is about my, my kind of initial desire to embrace Islam. Um, I don't know how many, are, anyone, is anyone in here like a convert or is anyone in here embrace Islam? <laughs> and is there anyone here who maybe was kind of born in a non-practicing kind of, who comes from a non-practicing background and decided to like start practicing their religion at some point in their life? Okay, well I suppose, um, for those of you who are complex, for those of you who have kind of started embracing Islam at a certain point in your life, sometimes it's a point where you just feel this like love, like whoa, like I'm in love with my Lord kind of thing and I need to Surrender not out of fear of him but out of love, you know? So this kind of this piece is called because I'm coming in love. I woke up with the sunrise, feeling like I was in love. I cried, how beautiful it was, like a present from above. I bathed in the presence of his love. I knew I was about to be brand new. So I changed my direction and I had no objection. My heart needed correction. Staring at my reflection, looking at the woman that I was and who I wanted to be. Tired of the vanity and their insanity. Only he holds the key to my destiny. So I surrendered to my faith through, my, through this music I create. I articulate how great this love is. I had to be rebirthed with my face in the earth. No longer placing my worth on the length of my skirt. And I know it sounds berserk, but I'm in love. Nothing can top it like the prophet's journey through the heavens without a rocket. Forget logic, imagine angels in devotion I'm filled with the emotion that like my heart's exploding Swimming in a love ocean with the rest of creation And the rest is amazing My breath is made for praising And I want to be free like a butterfly or bird on a breeze Feeling lovely and I don't want to be released 
on his path to please, on his path to peace with my Lord to please. Come on and flow with me. So, um, I embraced this long, um, three weeks before the 7 7 bombings, right? Like perfect time to be a Muslim. <laughs> perfect time to be a new Muslim. I converted to Islam three weeks to the day later, there was the, the bombings in London. So it was a very interesting time for me because I've never experienced real like hostility in my environment or where I live. I've never really experienced racism or, or prejudice, really, you know. And so um, converting to Islam at that time was very interesting. But I think when you are inspired by love, like anything, you can overcome anything, you know? Um, I decided to embrace Islam based on my based on the autobiography of Malcolm X. How many of you guys have heard that or heard of it? Watched it. Cool. And um, I think for me I come from a I'm, I'm from a Jamaican background and I really identify with Malcolm X as someone who is often striving for a sense of identity as a black man. And I think as a black woman you're always trying to find out who you are because Whenever you see images of yourself on TV, it's always negative. So I was really on a similar path to him. I didn't believe white people were devils, though. <laughs> like Malcolm X did, so I never believe that. Um, you know, but I really kind of identified with Malcolm X. And so when he made that journey towards Islam, or when he made that journey towards like, make, going to Mecca, for example, that was really powerful for me, particularly because my group was already called Poetic Pilgrimage. So I kind of identified with this idea of, of pilgrimage or, or journeying towards the one, you know, in whatever capacity that was. Um, so, yeah, alhamdulillah, you know, I decided that this was a path for me. I found truth in it. I found my truth in it. And, um, yeah, it's been it's the best day of my life. Um, the next piece I'm going to read for you guys, I've never actually performed off of my iPhone. I hope you don't mind. Do you mind? No. This piece, um, I wrote it I don't know if any of you are my friends on Facebook, but I recently put this poem up. Um, and it's called, For Those Who Seek God in a City. Um, and the reason why I wrote this poem, or why, why I was inspired to write this poem, is because like, a lot of us live in a very... We live in a concrete jungle, right? We live in a society where everything that we see is man-made. It's very difficult to, to really... We don't really live in a society with mountains and like beaches and lakes and, you know, Natural beauty, but I, I don't know where I live in London. There's like no natural beauty at all, and so it's like proper, you know, grimy. So, but then I thought to myself, but there's still people like in the grime, like in the smog, trying to find God, you know, like trying to find like light in in darkness. So this piece is, is inspired by 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 those people. So that, and this is a long poem for those who seek God's face in the city. So that. This is a dedication to the patient, ones who seek God's face in the city, those who wait to catch the sunrise even if it's only into grey skies because it reminds them of the majesty of their Lord. Those who seek the sun's decline behind graffiti patterned railway lines, hoping for orange and red light to paint blast the sky because they realise if you look close enough, God always sends us signs. Even when street lamps throw the stars in the sky, they try. Even though high-rise buildings barricade the skyline, they try. See, we are not the ones with desert nights where the full moon gives enough light to read scriptures by bedsides. We can't make it out to Mauritania or Yemen to sit at the feet of the enlightened who teach the mysteries of Allah with the subtleties of silence, their very fragrance as guidance for the misguided seeker who now sleeps in sacred villages where London becomes a dirty nightmare he'd rather forget. No police sirens, no street fights or forced right children, no people trying to earn a living on broken pavements to pay rent. This is for those who seek Mustafa, the chosen one, in the land of the frozen sun, where we use machines that blow heat to help us sleep. But each night here, there are those who dream of the unseen and witness the gleam of his reality. Waking up in tower blocks with the unwavering conviction that there is a God. This is an ode to those who seek Allah in the city. Looking for light in a land of dark days and dark nights. Tense hearts and bitter minds. To those who still seek the light in people's eyes. Because they know that we are all manifestations of God's signs. And everyone is reaching for him even if they don't realise. 
This is for those with mercy in their eyes, whose prayers have the power to pierce the skies, irregardless of where they reside. To those who ride the train, reading sacred scrolls from masters of the soul, making their hearts explode and come back together between Oxford Street and Tottenham Court Road. They cause the carriage to glow, and nobody knows. The columns of angels follow them wherever they go. There are saints in the city didn't know. Friends of Allah walking down the high road. To those who clutch prayer beads tight, their intimate companion in the depths of the night. As each bead passes through their fingertips, his most beautiful name stain their lips, and they send prayers on the Prophet till they no longer exist. To those who practice the fact that the whole earth is a masjid, so make sacred spaces wherever they see fit. Illuminating pavements, laying down prayer mats behind buildings that scrape the sky. Because God has his rights and they have no right but to submit. Their bodies exist in a metropolis but their souls have found bliss. To the seekers who learn from online teachers and download hookbus from iTunes and add it to their iPod playlist. Exchanging YouTube videos on Facebook pages, virtual sages to boost our faith in the city. For those who come to the conclusion that this whole earth is an illusion that will one day fade and all that will be left is his face. To those who seek God's grace in the city, for you, I wrote this. Amen. So, um, when, when I first embraced the start, one of the most difficult things I found was like trying to get my my hijabi style game tight. I don't know, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not into some super fly sisters out here, but for me, I find it so difficult because I didn't have any clothes. So we just had to kind of like layer things and go to like Islamic relief charity shops and buy like a buyers that were like 10 sizes too tall with stains on it that were like two pounds so that we'd have something to wear, right? It was very interesting. It kind of really made me think a lot about identity, you know, and how as Muslims living in the West, we really have to strive to kind of craft an identity that is uniquely our own and not be afraid of that as well, you know? Like, there's nothing wrong with, from, in my opinion, wearing clothes that come from, you know, Dubai or Shabbat Kameez from Pakistan and the Moroccan kind of hoodie things, they're all cool, but at the same time, I also think it's important that we have a style that's uniquely our own. So if you got, if you need to go to Primark and get like a maxi dress and get a pashmina from the market and a cardigan from the charity shop, like that's cool because that's you, you know, and that's authentically you. And I'm kind of not excluding brothers. I'm talking to my sisters though, because I think that our identity and how we express ourselves, whether you wear hijab or not, is is really a personal expression and it's a personal relationship with your Lord and I think it's very important that we have that, you know, and not be afraid of that. So that's one thing I learned and I'm still trying <laughs> to get my style together. I don't know, one day inshallah. Um, also, um, so the next piece I'm going to do is, um, I don't actually know how long I've got, so you just feel free to be like, time out, so you know. <laughs> the next piece I'm going to do is um, a piece called Silence is Consent. I'm going to do a spoken word version, but it's part of a longer song that I did with Muhammad Yahya and with Malira, my, my traveling pilgrim sister. And um, sometimes people who are aware of our work often say, oh, you guys are political, you guys are like political rappers. And someone, I was having an argument with someone the other day, he was like, you guys are political, and I'm like, no, we're not. And he's like, you are, it's very political. I'm like, nah, like, it's all about, for me, it's all about God. I don't, it's not about politics, it's about God. If we're talking about an unjust leader, I'm talking about him being unjust because God is just, you know? So if we, if we serve a Lord who is just, then we should, we should call for justice just because that's our right, you know? It's not because I'm trying to be down with any political party or anything like that. Um, so this piece is called Silence is Consent and it's basically, it was inspired by the situation in, in Gaza, but it really is more about justice, really. Bismillah. How do you sleep at night? How do you eat your dinner? How do you kiss your wife or even pray Salat and Isha? No, with your little dinner with Israel's foreign minister gave the green light for them to send in their militia on a mission to terrorize Gaza, land offensive airstrikes even from the harbor. But what's harder for me to comprehend is how you shut the borders as bombs dropped on them, obeying Israeli orders with your people trapped in a pen. The situation is bored of the bombs dropped on them, and Arab leaders spoke with silence and disowned them. Phosphorus decorated the sky and I was still wondering why you chose to comply in cohorts with killers as the innocent die. It's a modern day apartheid in our time alongside inexcusable war crimes but they don't get chastised, is that right? 
Wouldn't it have been in marvelous times? Because in 2009, Arab leaders sat by as Palestinians died. Mubarak, you've got blood on your hands. How does it feel? Are you a slave to Israel or Allah al Jalil? Was Saudi's nuclear deal with the USA the reason why the cats didn't have nothing to say about the terrorist wage from a terrorist state? Yet they staged a summit in Kuwait a little too late because by then a thousand people had already been slain. And Saudi kings look kind giving aid. One billion dollars is a pledge that they made, but they spent 300 mil on a trip to Spain. 3,000 entourage, now does that equate? When your peeps have no food or aid, some even sleep in a cave. Think of the lives you could save. Don't you crave Allah's shade on just Judgment Day? Don't you crave Allah's shade on Judgment Day? Thank you. And also, I wrote that at a time when everyone it was around a time that God was being dropped in Gaza, right? And everyone was like, this right here, blah, 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 USA, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, hello, like Egypt, you know? Like, hello, like other Arab countries with like their money. Like, what were you doing, you know? Like, don't worry about Israel. Like, not don't worry, but I'm saying, like, my priority isn't isn't you. Like, my priority is us, you know? Like, what are we doing? Like, what are we, or what are we not doing? You know, what are we not saying as a community, as a, as a worldwide community? Um, and so, the next poem I'm gonna do is also inspired by the situation, I suppose in the Middle East, but not just in the Middle East. I think it was inspired by conflict in a way. Um, but it's from a female perspective now. I, I suppose I'm talking from a kind of woman's, a woman's perspective. And it's called I Carry. I Carry. The decrepit legacy of those wretched casualties who've lost the faculty to fathom what it means to be free. I carry the weight. Like mothers dashing desperately across borders, becoming refugees with their blessed seed tied to their backs. Under attack from bombs dropped, limbs hacked, or devils on horseback. I inhale the scent of mutilated corpses tossed in a mass grave. I am a slave awaiting emancipation day. I'm a believer preparing my soul for judgment day. I am a wife of a prisoner in Guantanamo Bay, fighting for his freedom till my dying day. You see, he's innocent, regardless of what they try and say. I'm Betty Shabazz with Malcolm X dying on my knees, watching his life fall slowly to peace. Knowing soon I'll be left alone to raise my seed. Their father marched for the cause just so we could be free. Their father marched for the cause just so I could be free. The tears of war widows roll down my cheek. And when another bomb drops, that could be me wrapped in a white sheet. I'm an Iranian woman marching for equality. I'd rather die standing up than live on my knees. And it seems they didn't get the memo that my soul was born free. And it seems they didn't get the memo that my soul was born free. These whispers sleep so melancholy and keep me from dreaming. Innocent bloodshed keep these tears streaming. My heart is still bleeding. My art is still seeking a reason for being. The drums are still beating. And rape is still being used as a weapon of war. Invading what's pure. Those parading in Darfur and in Iraq. We still don't know what they're fighting for. And in Afghanistan, we still don't know what they're fighting for. For sure, we need a new beginning. Because poor Palestinian women are harassed at checkpoints. Watching soldiers pop holes in their husbands' pressure points. Castrating our men beyond their loins. Others lose their joints. Some mothers are held at gunpoint. By sons turned rebel soldiers high off a crack joint. It's like we're losing a plot and missing a point. Lyricist slash activist is my vision and viewpoint. The ink in my ballpoint turns from blue to red. I write with the blood of the shuhada so they can use my breath to sing freedom lullabies to those who sleep in warm beds and their pleas can be heard through me beyond death. The sun sets, smoke and mist drift over the Sea of Galilee. Gaza is burning, but we suffer the tragedy of apathy. No time even for sympathy. We flip news channels so casually because we don't have the faculty to give a damn mentality. We prefer the fallacy of fantasy to the morning light you call reality. But inshallah you'll see me. Inshallah you'll see me. Hijab tight, tight, black glove, this race high. Chanting a war cry. No justice, no peace. Till the day I use life. 
evident in the words I recite in the fire in my eyes. And on the day we all rise, I pray those treated like parasites will be raised in garments of pure light. Inshallah, those innocent victims of war in Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, Sierra Leone, Sudan, Palestine. I pray Allah raises them in gardens wearing garments of pure, pure light. Amen. Inshallah, you're going to be entertained in a little while and educated. So you're going to be entertained by Inshallah Muhammad Jafia. I, I really do um, warn you that like, he's going to warm you guys up, Inshallah. I'm just like the, you know, the starter, like cold soup or something, I don't know. Um, salad starter. Um, but yeah, so, so basically, I don't know what else to say about myself, about my journey to Islam, apart from I am in love with this path that I'm upon. That's all I can say. All I can say is I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love, you know? And I think that um, as Muslims and as people who are, you know, inspired by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and inspired by Allah, we should be the best of examples, you know? Like, we should, we should be the people who, when people hear the name Islam or Muslims are like, yeah, like, Beautiful, you know. I know those people. Like they're always smiling, they're always giving, they're always remembering God. They're always good, you know. Like we should strive for good character at least, like you know, minimum. You know, don't worry about. Don't please, no one take offense, but don't worry about fancy dress. Like it's not a fancy dress party. Don't worry about clothes. Like worry about the character and the content of your heart and how you live. You know, that's the most important thing to me. Like everything else is anyone can put a scarf on, you know? Like anyone can dress a particular way, but how many people can have goodness emanating from them? So when people see you, they see good, you know, and they see the profit from in you. Like that to me is very important. No disrespect to any other ideology or anything. I'm just saying for me, I want to see good, you know, and I want people to see good when they think of us. Like last the year before last when and I had the opportunity to perform in South Africa. And South Africa has a minority Muslim community like us at like 6%. You know, whenever you talk about Muslims, they're like, yeah. Like, wherever the Muslims are, they're just giving, you know? Like, they would, they would, a woman was saying to me, when, when you go to a school and there are Muslim kids there, you know that everyone's going to get fed because the mothers will come and bring food for everyone. All the poor children will eat, you know, when there's Muslims around. Like, that to me is what, we, that's what our name should, our name, our name should be fragrance. You know, I mean, it should be goodness, not like, <laughs> Muslim, <laughs> get away from me. She'd be like, yeah, like, mm, that's, yeah, they're, they're some good people, you know, I like them. Um, the next, my final piece, inshallah, that I'm going to leave you guys with is called Secret Sweetness. And um, I kind of need you guys to sing with me. <laughs> is that okay? Is that okay? Mmm, both the like, like, no, no comment. Alright, okay, you don't have to sing. <laughs> you don't have to sing, you can just, like, chant with me, yeah? Thanks for that. I thought you guys were leaving because I was going to try and make you sing. We were like, we're going to go. <laughs> Alright, so this is what I need you to sing or say with me, yeah? I need you to say, <clears throat> <laughs> I like that, I was forgetting their voices already. Okay, I need you to say, Secret sweetness of my soul, secret sweetness of my soul, secret sweetness of my soul. Yeah? Secret sweetness of my soul, secret sweetness of my soul, secret sweetness of my soul. I know it's cold, it'll get louder, inshallah. Secret sweetness of my soul. Secret sweetness of my soul. Secret sweetness of my soul. All right, so who's beatboxing then? <laughs> so when the hook comes, I need you to beatbox wherever you, wherever you are. <laughs> All right, this this um this piece is, is really it's just. You know, it's just a, it's like a love poem to Allah, really. That's what it is. <laughs> you guys ready? But I'll, I'll tell you guys when you need to come in. If I know, we can start with you guys. Yeah, let's do that. One, two, three. 
Secret sweetness of my soul. Secret sweetness of my soul. Secret sweetness of my soul. A little louder. Secret sweetness of my soul. Secret sweetness of my soul. Secret sweetness of my soul. Take a trip inside my eyes. Look and see what love inside. Love that's on a higher height. It's on a higher height. Take a trip inside my life. Look and see what you can find. Love that's on a higher height. Converse with the sublime, smell the pine for the sunshine, way upon a mountain high. Together we can climb up a stairway to heaven, ascending to stand in his presence, bathe in his essence, chase his blessings like we're chasing butterflies in a meadow. In love with the divine, so just let go, oh, over the rainbow, past where the sun goes. Ignore the shadows of the heart from he who departs from the kingdom. Sing songs of freedom, peace and beauty. By a blue sea, see it's my duty. Even if the wicked ones pick up weaponry to shoot me from the sky. Still I fly, I have to do me. The only one who rules is he who gave me breath and will bless me with death when there's nothing left. Guide my steps, expand my chest. So the kingdom of heaven can exist in my midst. And I can feel what bliss is. It's bigger than this. It's an ocean of mercy. Never ending journey of learning and yearning. For the liberty that comes from true humility. With heat to heat with the ability to quit the earth. Turn mountains into dirt. Show me my fragility and bless me with fertility. So I can plant seeds in my garden. Have children like trees with their leaves. Kissing the heavens. Let's. Kiss the heavens, kiss the heavens. Secret sweetness of my soul. Secret sweetness of my words, my beatbox. The secret sweetness of my soul. And again, secret sweetness of my soul. Secret sweetness of my soul. Secret sweetness of my soul. Just the brothers. Of my soul, secret of my soul. Oh, I bless you guys. And the ladies, of my soul, secret sweetness of my soul, secret sweetness of my soul. All together, one more time. Let's go. Secret sweetness of my soul, secret sweetness of my soul, secret sweetness of my soul. Thank you. So like I said, my name is Akina, I'm one half of Poetic Pilgrimage. Um, I don't have CDs to sell, but I have a gift of free music for you guys. So if you're interested in hearing any of our stuff, we have a free CD that can be downloaded. And it is at www.starwomenmixtape.com. You can maybe just type in Star Women in Google, you might come up. But if you don't, starwomenmixtape.com is the whole free CD. And like I said, for those of you in here that maybe aren't Muslim, I really welcome you and I hope that you learn something from being around this community. Um, and if you are interested, I would just say, like, walk with an open heart, you know, and, and you might not even necessarily like embrace Islam, but you might learn something. And for those that are born Muslim, all I can say is, like, let's just walk with light and love and let that. Let's honor this honor that we are a part of, inshallah. Thank you so much. Started off in a war zone where I was conceived. Death all around me, but God, you let me live. 
Must have been a reason for the things that I see Even as a little kid I knew I could reach my dreams Looking back at life that they struggle not in vain Three jobs a day for below minimum wage I've been through it all but I'd never be ashamed That I robbed milk bottles to suppress my hunger pain Daddy put in work so I'll always be the same Tried to build my name, said these cities in the rain And you can keep the fame, but I'd rather bring a change For the socially deprived when the government's to blame I'm speaking from the heart The voice of the people, but don't treat me like a star People's army soldiers, so I gotta play my part If not part of the solution, what's the purpose of these bars? Now I wake up in the morning and I look to the sky Regardless of the struggle, thank God I'm alive I could have been ten foot deep or banged up inside But the truth is a lot done gave me a try And I survived the war zone, flew to Lisbon Raised in a vicious and racist system Second class citizen, that's what they called me Stripped off my rights, but they never floored me So I hold to my dean in a world full of sin Where pedophiles strike with control by the gin Little girls no longer want to get a degree Rather copy Lady Gaga on MTV I see so much greed indeed It cuts me the way they deceive And lie to our kids So I'm yearning to reach and teach from my speech But how can I complain if not willing to teach? How can we complain if not willing to teach? Tell me why should we complain When we don't even speak? Thank you Um, good evening, assalamu alaikum, peace. Um, first of all, I just want to say all praise is due to the Creator for allowing myself and every single one of us to be here. Second of all, I'd like to thank the promoters and the organizers of this event that have been putting a lot of work and making sure everything is running smoothly. And thirdly, I'd like to thank all of you because you could have picked and decided to be anywhere this evening, but you've wanted to be here with us, so I'm grateful. I'm did it up. Um, so my name is Mohamed Yahya. I was born in Mozambique, Southeast Africa. Anyone here been to Africa? Just see a show of hands. Okay, for what part of your case? What part of Africa? Algeria. Algeria. So? Nigeria. Nigeria. Anyone else? I see some here. Yeah. Morocco. Morocco. Sudan. Sudan. Wow. Cool. Sorry. Libya. Libya. Cool. Algeria. Algeria as well. Zimbabwe. Oh, okay. I'll tell you why I'm excited. All right. <laughs> Go ahead. Egypt. Egypt. Okay, so Mozambique is a very beautiful country that's surrounded by five, five other countries, and one of them is actually Zimbabwe. My, where my father used to live was like a 40 minute drive to the border of Zimbabwe. Uh, unfortunately, when I was two years old, I was forced to flee my country because of a destructive war. A very destructive war that left more than two million people dead and more than five million people displaced. And um, it was a very terrible war where a lot of children were turned into child rebel soldiers. So one of the most common things that would take place is that soldiers would come to your house at night time while everyone's asleep. And while uh, while everyone's asleep, they'll kick down you know, your front door and look for children and give them a Klashnikov and make them shoot their own parents. And the reason why they would do that is to eliminate any family contact and the child from a very young age is just scarred. So from then they would indoctrinate him and often drug him and turn him into child rebel soldiers. But all praise is due to the Creator for allowing me to survive through that and escape that. So I travelled to Lisbon, which is the capital of Portugal, and that's where I was raised until I was like 10 years old before coming to UK. So, um... I wasn't born a Muslim. Um, my father was always a very spiritual man, and um, and me and him always had a very strong connection. And uh, he told me that religion is more than what you do on a Friday in the mosque, or more than what you do on Sunday at church. It's a lifestyle. So we said, when I want to, then I can decide and become whatever I want to be. So when I was about 13 years old, uh, actually, from when I was about 11, I started going to church in. Portugal, and when I was about 13, I became a born-again Christian in in UK. So, um, yeah, so, but by the time I was 16, I kind of moved away from Christianity, 
because I had a lot of questions and a lot of doubts and I'll constantly ask my pastor questions that seemed a bit, um, questions that I just couldn't understand, things, different passages from the Bible and the answers that he would give me just didn't uh, fulfill me, I just didn't feel content with the answers so I would kind of, I started moving away from Christianity and started looking into other faiths and other lifestyles, other traditions, I looked into Buddhism, at one point I kind of grew lots and slightly adopted lots of foreign ideology but then, um, around seven years ago, I went to Gambia. Anyone been to Gambia? No? Yeah, you been to Gambia? Okay, alhamdulillah. Alright, has anyone seen the film called Roots? Yes. Yeah? How many people have seen Roots? Come on, this should be like all of you. If you haven't seen it, you have back to see it. It's an amazing film about this individual who was stolen and taken from Gambia, from a city called Jufre, and taken to the Americas and forced to become a slave. And then working up in the field, in the plantation. So, um, I went to that country, Gambia. At the time, I was just going there because my friends had been there before. And it was the first time I had the opportunity to travel back to the country, where I was, to the continent that I was born in. You know, I couldn't return back to Mozambique because they had the war that lasted uh, 17 years. So, I couldn't return there. So, this was the first time someone had invited me to go back to to the continent. So I went there and I was not aware that 95% of the population in Gambia are all Muslim. And um, at the time, you know, I had locks and things were very, very different. And I remember that trip changed my life. Every single person, may, may God bless all the people that I came across from in that trip. Because that trip really, really changed my life. Um, I had gone to school in London with Muslims and I went to college with Muslims and before converting to Islam I used to you know smoke weed with Muslims and do all funny things that I shouldn't do with Muslims but never did they ever teach me about Islam you know some of them I considered to be my you know best friends my closest friends but we would do everything except talk about Islam and I knew very little so, when I went to Gambia and I met a community which was so poor, but yet so given, I was, just, I, I was just blown away. I'll give you a few examples. I remember um, walking past this house where people were eating outside, sitting down, and people were eating off one plate. It's a family, maybe about four or five people. And they had one plate. Now, I'm not a small guy, as you can see. Um, and the, the meal that they had on their plate was very simple. It was just like rice with tomato sauce and stuff. It was very simple. And they saw me go past and they invited me to sit down and eat with them. Now, I felt shy because I could finish that whole plate by myself. <laughs> and there's a family here of about four or five people who have barely got enough for them and they're asking me to share with them. I mean, sit down. And at first I was like, no, 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 it's okay, it's cool, I'm not hungry. But um, I, they kind of insisted and I sat down and I ate with them and I said, why do you do this? I'm not, you don't know me. And I said, this is, we're Muslim, this is what we do. You know, we share our food and this is what we do. And I remember at the time I used to go clubbing and I'd come back like early hours in the morning and I'd be going back to the hotel where I was staying and I could hear like, I was like, is this an after party? What's that noise? And then this guy was like, no, that's the Adan. And I was like, the Ad who? And he's like, that's the call to prayer. I was like, well, people pray this time. He was like, yeah. So one day I went to see, and I could just see, like, literally dozens and dozens of people rushing early in the morning, like, to pray. And I was like, wow. While I'm there listening to this music in a club, for, you know, I, was, I wasn't really a drinker, but, um, you know, there's a lot of smoke, people drinking, doing all kinds of stuff. And I'm just, and people just, like, in so much devotion and so much love towards God, that really touched me. Um, I remember... Um, when I'd go out, I'd usually go out with a group of people from there because things are so cheap. Like, you, can, you know, if you go to the villages, you can get like a, a meal, you know, from a local place for like 50p or something. It's really cheap. So when I'd go out, I'd go out with like quite, quite a few of us. And we were going to go to this restaurant and this guy from there said, actually, you know what? There's four of us. Two of us will buy from this restaurant and the other two will go and buy our food from this restaurant. And it doesn't matter where we eat. We just buy it from there and then we can take the food to the other restaurant. 
And to me, that didn't make any sense. I was like, why are you going to go there? Why don't you know, why can't we just you know, we'll go to one place? And he's like, because they don't earn much here. So that way, both of them would earn the same amount. And I was like, wow, like, do you know them? And he's like, no, this is how we are. We're Muslim. So I kept seeing all these positive things that people would do, and I started associating them with Islam. Like, for example, this guy who became a really close friend of mine, Beric, Beric he, um, he was a taxi driver. And throughout the day, he would take tourists around, um, and that's how he would earn his money. So he'd go to the city, take tourists around. But in the evening, every single evening in the nighttime, he would drive back to his village, and you, you see that big uh, women with big baskets of food on their head, or carrying loads of children, or water and stuff. He would spend like the evening dropping everyone off and giving them lifts for free. And he said, "This is Islam. I've, I've earned my money, so it's now time to help someone else." And I was just like, wow, why didn't I see this Islam? Why is it that I went to school with Muslims, and I went to college with Muslims, and I smoked weed with Muslims, and I do things that I shouldn't do with Muslims, but they wouldn't teach me? Why didn't they share this beautiful gift? You know, so I really had to start thinking about what I thought Islam was, and what Muslims portrayed Islam to be, and be able to separate between the two. So when I came back to UK, I, um, I looked further into Islam, and I cut off my dreadlocks, as you can see. And I took my shahada. That's all we So that's my journey. I'm the Thank you. Thank you. I'll share something else with you. I'm not sure if Sabina told you. Um, so, um, 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 <laughs> okay, so I'm trying to remember the time. So maybe about eight years ago, before, no, eight, no, maybe more, yeah, maybe, no, actually about nine, almost ten years ago, uh, I, before Islam, I used to go out with this girl. And um, I don't usually do this, I don't usually say this, but I'll, I'll share it with people today. Because I can feel the love. <laughs> okay, so, do you know the story? Or should I not? Okay, some halal classes. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so about, uh, maybe around nine years, I used to go out with this girl before Islam, and um, uh, we went out, and then we went our separate ways, and I didn't see her for a very long time. And then I converted to Islam. And then I saw her in a city where, it wasn't the city where we used to live, completely different city, hours away. And she sees me with like a kufi and a beard, and I see her with a full hijab. I'm like, oh my god, how are you? Do you remember me? <laughs> and we started talking, and da, da 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 And a few months later, we got married. And alhamdulillah, that's Sakina. It was performing. So, yeah, we've been married now for um, yeah, five years. So, it's just, it's just amazing. I'll just chat with you because it's amazing how sometimes God's. God has someone for you, and you might be the right person at the wrong time. You just never know, you know. Sometimes God will take you through different journeys and then bring you back. Anyway, um, I'm going to get into a bit of performances now. So, um, the first track I'm going to perform is basically called Legacy, and uh, it's got a very Afrocentric sound to it. Legacy, when I speak of legacy, is because what we're doing here is not tradition that we, myself and Sakina, came up with. Using the art form of music or poetry to express ourselves has been in various traditions. You can see it in African Americans when they were going through, you know, through struggles. You can see people in plantation fields. You can see even at the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu there was a lot of uh, poets. One of them being the Hassan ibn Talib, who used to defend Islam for poetry. But anyway, this track is called Legacy, and I hope you enjoy it. So, track one. Let's make sure it's nice and loud. One, one, two. Turn up a little bit more, please. Just a touch more. Uh, uh, uh. From the depths of East Africa, I maneuver like a traveler. Over from patterns and instruments, I'm not pull up. Back to rap, it's through the door, flying to the shore. Captivate the wood, it's not a crowd, peak for more. Spider, it's a hard man, try to be a sinner. The back of the valley, give me deep, what's the shema? Who hoops, the hat, get father, I look a lot of. Who do us up, it's only for a lot of. Chit 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 ch
If someone tells me to rap about this, create something about this, I can't always do it because my poetry doesn't just like blah, 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 you know? So it, it, it's, it kind of comes from you, but through you, but sometimes not always from you. But um, so um, this piece, I had to do a lot of research for me to find out about what Jenny was. And so many times I was just filled, left with like, tears like in my eyes because I was reading these stories about people in Janine and um, I remember specifically reading about one mother who had to boil grass that, so that she could feed her children and if we just take time to actually think about that it's, it's, it's nuts it's really nuts like we go around every day complaining about things that we want to have, you know, a car, new house, whatever, you know. But when we compare ourselves to people there and that have so little but yet so happy, we realize how grateful we should be. <laughs> okay, so, um, uh, yeah, this piece is basically taken from the perspective of a Palestinian child. Okay, this is my little I haven't done this for a while, so um, just bear with me if I mess up. Your remarkable landscapes are fading away. Now a barren wasteland is always seen today. They covered your soil with the blood of numerous martyrs. Who gave your life to the struggle when times are the hardest? Oh, sweet Janine, tell me please, what will it take to stop the genocide continuing inside of this place to put an end to all the madness? Last week, last week we were forced to strip naked. My mother refused because she said that her body was sacred. So they burned down my school. And I wonder who's responsible for making those rules. Why are they here? From who were they sent? They drove us out from our home, now we live in a refugee tent. Mommy cries herself to sleep and daddy is scared. Does the world know what's happening? Does anyone care? It doesn't seem fair. My little brother's only five but already in a wheelchair because he got shot while praying in a mosque. Now his happiness has gone and his hope almost lost. Look deep in my eyes and tell me what do you see? Do you see a terrorist? Or just a child that wants to be free? For how long more we will be degraded by these vultures? Have our sisters dishonored while they treat us like filthy cockroaches? I swear I die trying, cause in the depths of my heart lies the soul of a soldier who rather die serving his maker than live by the laws of a Zionist culture. I've been stripped from my rights. Now enslaved in my own birthplace, just take a look at my people. Can't you tell by the pain in our face? Can't you see by the way that we live? When the children are crying and are hungry, but there's nothing to give. And if we speak against oppression, they're quick to put holes in our joints, force our women to give birth in the streets, next to their daily checkpoints. So the next morning after Fajr, with the broken metal piece, I dug the hole as deep as I could. Kiss my mother's forehead and hug the foot a little longer because I knew that I should. She asked me if I'd make her proud and I told her I would. Then without looking back, I walked, I walked, I walked to the outskirts of my refugee camp. There I stood like a lion, my heart never sank. With the rock in my hand, I looked steady into the tank and I said, Look deep in my eyes and tell me what do you see? Do you see a terrorist or just a child who wants to be free? Thank you. one last track to you. This is called Voltaire Pala. So in Portuguese that means like Voltaire is like to return. So it's to return there. And this is really dedicated to every person, every refugee that's had to flee their country because of war, because of corrupt regimes, oppression, whatever, you know, this is dedicated to all of those. I haven't done this for a very, very long time. 
So hopefully uh, it will be okay. And this is sampled an amazing artist, I'm sure my sister will know who his name, is from Nigeria. And yes. <laughs> yeah, his name is Fela Kuti. Anyone here heard of Fela Kuti? guys heard of Fela Kuti? Yeah? Okay, cool. Good. So um, Fela Kuti was an amazing artist and a musical activist, man. He was like from Nigeria and he spoke against oppression and corrupt regimes in his own country. And um, yeah, so this track is some for him. Uh, I hope I can do this. So, inshallah, track five. And if you guys want to, sorry, sir. And if you want to, feel free to express yourself how you want to. And if you feel uncomfortable, you can always do the halal dance. <laughs> okay, so track five, please. Um.